Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So I got a car out here to work on. Luckily it quit raining. It was just raining in cats and dogs yesterday. I actually had to go help out uh, Oh How Happy Gardener. I'll put a link to this channel up here. Um, but uh, he lost a belt. I just hit a big puddle of water and you know, shot the belt off. Uh, but so I've got a, a GMC uh, Yukon Denali 2012. Um, belongs to a, a friend of mine and, and a former boss of mine um, but uh, it's been having some weird electrical issues so um, they've noticed uh, a couple times um, when they have closed the real tailgate that the radio all the radio navigation big fancy screen thingy will like shut down and restart um, and then they've been having problems with the cruise control, not wanting to come on sometimes. And, uh, they've also noticed that a lot of times the cruise control problem seems to be tied into when they turn on the rear wiper. So they'll, they'll turn on the rear wiper, cruise control won't work. But, um, they've also noticed it without the rear wiper on, and they've noticed it, at, like, using the rear wiper and not having a problem. Um, and then the latest symptom was, uh, that, that, I think they kind of brought it in for was like the heat wouldn't work when it was sitting at an idle and then they'd start driving down the road and the heat would come back and then it sit at an idle and no heat so when they told me that I told them like check your coolant first of all I mean that the blend door and everything is computer controlled it could be something with that but that sounds like a low coolant problem and sure enough it was low on coolant so they promptly took it to the auto parts store and put the wrong coolant in it and topped it off uh, but at least it has coolant so uh, that's interesting it's got a coolant leak somewhere uh, they said it didn't overheat uh, we'll see if we can find an obvious leak um, I don't have a pressure tester um, so sometimes that can be a bit challenging um, of course I'll probably if there's any question as to not being able to find a leak we'll go ahead and throw the uh, head gasket to tester kit on there make sure it's not getting any exhaust back out of the radiator which could be in the indicative of a head gasket um, he's had two of these I'm not sure if it was the last one or this one um, but I know one of them it might have been this one had some valve train issues and um, had to have some valve train work done so I'm not sure if the head came off for that or not but uh, if so you know you could have a failure head gasket um, and that will cause a coolant leak right I, I do notice uh, when I pulled it up and parked it yesterday, it's got just a bit of like a fish biting uh, kind of miss at idle. Um, as soon as you hit the gas though, it seems to be fine. Um, just sitting at idle, I'm noticing that. I don't know if that means anything or not. Um, so I guess I'm going to attack this electrical problem. Uh, by just looking at the wiring diagrams first and trying to see if there's something that uh, a module in the back might have in common with uh, the radio and stuff. Um, I believe there is an audio amplifier and like maybe the digital radio receiver and that stuff is in the back of the vehicle. Um, and I'm just have a sneaky suspicion that they probably talk on a low speed LAN. Um, I'm not sure about the cruise control. Um, I don't know if a low coolant condition might cause that. I know Hondas can be weird about their idles and different things when the coolant's low. Um, so I'm not sure if that's it. I imagine it's a problem with the low speed LAN as well. I'm not sure if the cruise will operate, cruise module operates on the low speed LAN. Um, I'll have to take a look. Uh, it's going to be electronic throttle body that's going to be controlling the cruise control and I know that network problems can really throw GM's for all kinds of weird problems with the electronic throttle body control and vice versa electronic throttle body can throw all kinds of weird network problems out the other way 
I don't know if that's like the older ones where there's its own dedicated bus between the throttle body and the PCM or if it's running on a regular bus. I'm sure it's not running on the low speed LAN or low, low speed serial or anything. So, I don't know, I'm going to dig into some wiring diagrams and see what I can figure out and I'll bring you all along. So I'm looking here at my um, body and accessories computer data lines diagram and um, I'm looking down through here, uh, BBB Industries has nothing on this vehicle as far as wiring diagrams and um, so I'm using the Automate and um, I actually really like Automate a lot as a home mechanic. I like it better than the Chilton's they used to have. Um, so we see all this stuff down here across the bottom. Let me move you down there a little bit. Okay, so we see here um, we've got remote control, remote control door lock receiver, memory seat module, heated seat control modules, inflatable passenger presence, rear object control sensor, rear object sensor control module. So that's in the back of the vehicle somewhere. Um, and here's the power lift gate module, right? And here is inflatable restraint. And this all ties into this uh, bus here, right? So there's probably a connector, JX300. It all ties back into the low speed bus. So, and this is the JX200. So if we come back over here to part two. Um, Let's uh, zoom in on this a little here. Um, so, here's the traffic information receiver. Uh, here's the body control module. There's a junction block. Um, here is vehicle communication interface, inside rear view, heated seat control. Here's rear seat audio control, right? And here's an audio amplifier. Here's rear seat audio and digital radio receiver. These all tie into the low speed LAN as well. Um, let's see. Uh, let's zoom in on this one. Let's see what else we got here. Inflatable rear object sensor control module. Yep, heated seat. Oh, I think this might be the one we already looked at. Yep, I'm going to look at part one. Okay. Um, where's the DLC? Uh, serial data gateway theft deterrent, auxiliary body control, vehicle communication interface, uh, instrument panel cluster, um, HVAC control, AC compressor. This all runs off of the low speed bus. Assist sleep control. <laughs> Or assist step control. Okay, I was like, what? Assist <laughs> sleep control. Um, side object sensor, door lock window switch, door lock window sense driver. Um, so, what I need to do is reproduce the issue. What I'd like to do is go tie into this low speed bus at some point and be able to reproduce the issue, right? And then see uh, if I'm getting communication errors, if I'm getting, you know, half of a square wave, I'm showing one grounding out, and then try to reproduce that, if I can, to figure out where the fault is without accidentally fixing it. Um, so, I don't know. Here's here's some more. Um, I don't know if this is just a different model. Let's, oh, this is uh, the, um, what, uh, is this the high-speed bus. I think this is the high speed serial. Um, and so that would tell us some other stuff on that bus. Engine control module. Automatic transmission. Yeah. Um, let's see what we got here. Transfer case. Fuel pump. Suspension control. That's not stuff I'm looking for. Let's we'll see what's under here. Um, the LIN bus, electronic computer, or electronic compass, junction block, body control mode. 
Window motor driver. Logic. Door lock window switch driver. Hmm. Door lock window switch passenger. Okay. Not interested in that. Body control module. I'd like to see where or I need to get into look at where the um, control circuits are for cruise and where that comes off. Electronic brake control, fuel pump, trailer brake control, electronic suspension control, electronic or here's the ECM. Uh full solenoid. And this is just all the serial data and I'm not seeing too much here that would have anything to do with the rear of the car um, and cruise control slash radio so I think what I'm going to do is uh, just see if I can go ahead and find a spot to tie into the low speed land uh, with the scope and um, go open and close the rear tailgate um, turn on the rear wiper and see if I can make it flick out and capture that so I'm still going to be using my old cheapy scope for this. Um, a viewer sent me a Hantec 8 channel scope and I really appreciate it and I have been playing with it. And it's just really crappy to use. I am genuinely surprised as to how bad the Hantec scope actually is. Um, and just when you think you finally got it, you, you still have a signal with way too much noise on it to be of use in some situations. And when you think you've got it, their software like glitches out and it quits recording and you lose everything that you were... You finally get that reproduction and you lose everything. Um, <laughs> so, so there's an open source project uh, making software for those hand tech scopes. I want to play with that and I plan to. But um, I'm starting to think like there might be a Pico in my future. Um, I really appreciate the viewer sending me that and he told me like, oh, you don't want that. It's a piece of junk. And he is 100% correct. <laughs> it is a piece of... It's... it's uh, you know, you hate to say it's a piece of junk because you got it for free. But it really is hard to use because it has some serious shortcomings on the software side. Anyway. Let me get uh, my shoes on and we'll go out here and see what we can figure out on this thing. I think I'll just start with the scan tool and see if I'm getting any communication errors. We'll do an all-module scan. And... Um, I guess I need to look for this coolant leak too. You know, it's a Sunday and it's a rare, pretty nice day out there uh, for December. But I only have so much time to work on it, so I don't know. You know, it, it's frustrating. Sometimes people just need to learn. I don't, I don't, I don't work on cars in the winter, right? You really need to take it to a shop in the winter. It's something I do in the summer and spring for fun when I feel like it. Anyway, I'll go out here and uh, see what I can find. All right, so I got the thing started. I'm actually letting it warm up, hoping it'll build up some pressure. I could find a coolant leak. So far, I'm not seeing any sign of a coolant leak. I don't seem to have any pressure coming out of the overflow tank. Um, so it may have an intake gasket issue burning the coolant. <laughs> Might be the reason for that little bit of a stutter kind of miss at idle. But anyway, um, I'm just kind of looking through here, so I'm going to go into the special functions. We're going to go ahead and do the all module scan here. And let's just scan all the modules on this guy and see what codes we have. Might help lead us down a path of what's going on. Uh, of course, it doesn't have a check engine light, but check engine lights only come on for emissions related codes. Uh, they, they don't come on uh, necessarily because of other goofy things like radios rebooting. All right, so we got one DTC in the engine control module. Oh, brake switch circuit one, high voltage. Well, that's interesting. All right, hang on, it's my wife. It's the boss. That was my wife. Her fantastic PT McCruiser Junker. PT McJunker. Won't start. <laughs> 
Yeah, you, know, you never know when you turn the key in a Chrysler. It's, it's a, it's a, it's, you have about as good a chance of winning the lottery as you do of it starting half the time. You know. Uh, I just, I don't even understand how places like Chrysler can stay in business. I mean, their their stuff is just complete, complete junk. I mean, GMs are bad enough, right? But like Chrysler's are just take take incompetency of design to a whole new level. It's just insane. Well, I'm gonna leave the lights on in the garage and run down here. I try to ask her, you know, like, is it turning over? Is it just clicking? It sounds like it's struggling to turn over and start. So we'll see. I don't know what that translates from in blonde to a guy. So. All right, I'll, uh, I guess I'll be back. All right, I'm on my way back from rescuing the wife. I'm the uh, PT McCruiser Junker just wouldn't start. It was cranking over like almost like it had dead no compression on one cylinder or something, or maybe it was only firing on one cylinder. I don't know. It wouldn't fire up. So I pulled off plug wire number one, got my test light out, hooked up the ground. And I turn it over to see if it had spark. And of course it started and she wouldn't turn it off. And and then, you know, I ended up shocking the crap out of myself because, you know, I should have told her, like if it starts, turn it off because I'm holding the plug wire in my hand. But put the uh, number one plug wire back on and the thing started right up and it's running great. So I don't know, we might have a bad ignition control module or something going on. I don't know. Chrysler's are junk. Um, we'll have to see if it happens again. <sighs> well, uh, you know, the other thing that might be, uh, we've had a check engine light coming on, and I think it might be the like, camshaft position sensor is going squirrely on it. Might be time to take a look at that and see. But my scan tool is back at the house hooked up to a GMC. So, I'm on my way back. Say hi, Wesley. Hi. Hi. All right. Okay, anyway, back to kind of where we were. Um, here, let's take a look and see what all we got. We've got... Engine control modules got one DTC. And that is brake switch circuit voltage high. Which that's probably causing the cruise control malfunction. And we got nothing in the transmission control. We got one e uh, electronic brake control. We have a yaw rate signal error. Well, the yaw sensors, I believe, are up front there, little little levers. So I don't know. It might be a loose connection or something on that guy. I'm not sure that that's related. Electronic suspension control has none. Um, Here's one in the amplifier. Now that's in the back. Control module power circuit low voltage. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, body control module. Uh, passenger compartment dimming circuit 2 and dimming 3 circuit. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, driver's door switch. There's one DTC in here for that. Passenger compartment lamp control circuit. Short to battery. And that's uh, driver door switch module. Is there something short not in the driver door switch? Hmm, that's interesting. Of course, the uh, yeah, I mean, that would definitely be the cruise control problem with the brake switch. If that was, brake lights weren't, were staying high, that would cause that. HVAC control module. Main temperature control feedback circuit open. Right temperature control feedback circuit open. Hmm. Rear temperature control feedback circuit open. So there's a problem with the HVAC control module. Something going on there. We're getting open circuit codes. Permit. Uh, instrument panel, nothing. 
left side object detection module so that would again be on the driver's side lost communication with object detection control module right so it's the left side object detection control module so it detects objects on the left side but it lost control it lost communication with the right side module so that's a U code that's a communication code liftgate control module there's actually nothing in the liftgate control module passenger door switch passenger compartment lamp control circuit short to ground so <sighs> hmm <laughs> I'm just wondering I know the one time he told me like well Sierra closed the rear Terry gate and then the radio and stuff rebooted but I'm wondering if they didn't open the passenger door first right and uh, these uh, problems can occur um, here this is the left side module lost control with the right side module um, I'm betting that's in probably one of the doors or left side object there's an object detection module in the back right like when you back up I don't know HVAC control module Main temperature circuit control feedback open. Driver door switch. Compartment lamp control circuit short to battery. Body can well, I guess if the, that mo there could be a problem in the driver side harness too that would cause it to lose communication with the right. It would cause the problem with. Uh, the dimming control circuit problems right those are in the body control module but it's getting that probably from the driver's door switch module right um, left side object detection module I don't know if that's all in that door as well it might be um, there's nothing in the liftgate control module but we did have that one in the amplifier which is low power control module uh, power circuit low voltage hmm. interesting so might want to check that door flex um, so let's go first let's go ahead and go back here I'm going to go into the ABS and I believe on something this new I should be able to go in here and hit live data. Yep. That's what we get. Brake pedal position released. Applied. Released. Applied. Yep. Steering wheel angle. That's working. Seems to be working. And the only thing else I have in here, I think, is the actual stuff. The all rate sensor. It changes a little when I rock the car. Brake pedal signal seems is valid. That or accelerometer. I don't even know. Steering wheel position. Yeah. I apply the brake. So we might have a sticky brake switch, or we might have a short and some wiring somewhere. Well, I'm gonna go in and do some thinking on this guy before I before I, I decide what to do. Um, because I'm just thinking something something weird's going on. Something shorten. Something got green crusty, something's got a bad wire, and it's throwing everything for a loop, I do believe. So, let me go do some looking and see where all the common uh, junction blocks and uh, that kind of stuff are in this thing. Alright, so I've just been kind of doing some poking around. Um, a lot of the um, codes on this are related to like low battery condition. Um, some of them are not. So, the brake light switch issue, I can't reproduce. 
that may not be this that may be something else but I had the radio playing it turned up um, I was just kind of going through and looking at everything and I've, I've since pulled that module out just to look under it for all the corrosion on this uh, little fuse center down here you just got these these are real easy you just got these two levers you flip that all looks good and clean and tight no problems there uh, this main ground wire right here that's all looks good clean and tight um, so I come over here there's a main fuse right here we got some green crusties but the main thing is I don't know if you can see it you look down in here this fuse is bad it's just all loose I gave that a wiggle uh, of course it's not going to do it now because I got that main control center out but the uh, radio and nav system reset <laughs> the door lock starting going like <laughs> um, it just started flaking the frick out so this fuse here is what provides all the power over to that fuse center that controls like everything in the car and I think that's what we're going I think you know every once in a while they slam a door probably especially if it's raining and it's really moist this would get worse should make sense like why you have to have the wiper on is because it's raining so it's moist out today it's quit raining and it's not moist out um, you can see right up here on this cover where that's been arcing it's all burned up so um, I still can't find a coolant leak I can't smell a coolant leak the coolant's not low now I'm gonna tell them probably to take that to somebody that's got a pressure tester if it continues to lose coolant and have them pressure test it see if they can find the leak that way could be intake manifold I don't know how common that is on these but uh, interesting I guess uh, look at this fuse if you have this problem on these I'm gonna go see if I can find another 175 amp fuse locally to replace this with it will clean up all these connections and replace all that look how burnt that is that's been arcing for a while so I think that's probably causing the majority of the issues here. Um, you know, the, the, you get voltage problems and these modules lose their mind because all the communication on that low speed LAN and everything is based on its reference to 5 volts. So, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do all this. I do believe um, some of these newer cars, um, you're not supposed to remove... Uh, the ground unless you remove the positive first I think that body control module can have some issues like permanent damage type issues from that so I'm just gonna leave the ground hooked up while I do this we'll take this all apart clean it and get that fuse replaced and then um, probably gonna go ahead and ship it down the road I'm gonna take another better look I mean this thing's pretty warm I've been letting it run I smell no coolant I see no coolant um, I see no evidence of leaks around the water pump, any of the hoses. Uh, I see nothing dripping underneath. So it makes me think we might have like intake manifold issues or something. But uh, I think that's the cause of his electrical problems. <laughs> Is that little fuse right there. It's crazy. Because uh, he had real similar issues on the one he had before and he traded it in. And I bet you that was the problem on it too. And the dealer just, you know say oh can can reproduce the issue ship it $75 so um, all right I'm gonna go find a fuse all right I think I found the right fuse but it says may not fit your 2012 GMC Yukon Denali <laughs> on the notes so 12 13 I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one off and take it with me Trying to short this out while I'm wrenching. I don't even know if it's coming off right. Oops. Luckily, that's got a rubber handle. It's just it's all completely screwed up. bigger one I 
Let me get something, just disconnect this main positive before I short something out and end up with spark, flames, and fire and brimstone. I walk in there and get a knot 10 for, yeah, it's a 10. All right. Like I said, normally I would disconnect the negative first on a car. But some of these newer ones don't like to have power applied to some of the modules while there's no ground present. Although it shouldn't because the main piece thing's out anyway, but look at the bottom of that. Hmm. It's really interesting. Let's see if we can get that out of there. It's pretty melted. And it's pretty turning on the bottom here. It's not staying locked in there. Is it turning? We're probably going to have to cut that bolt off and uh, we're going to have to cut that bolt off and then we're going to have to get a new bolt and put it in. I'm going to see if I can get that one to come loose. That's probably a 15. Yeah. Let's try a 14. Don't usually see 14s on GMs, but yep, there's a it's a 14. And then that side's coming loose. Oh, that a, there we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is just kind of stick that back on there a little bit. It might be time for a new battery on this thing too. It's got the original. Looks like it's probably the original battery. Sorry, it has no date code. I bet it's original to the car. There's quite a bit of corrosion on the terminal here. That's a sign of low battery voltage. I think that battery has seen better days. Alright, I'm going to have to get a wrench to put on the bottom of that guy. There we go. And then get the 13 back out. Crusty. Oh, I got chickens. <laughs> I got chickens. Hi, chicken, 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 chicken. Chicken, 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 chicken. You guys are tame. You just running around checking out the neighborhood, aren't you? Running around checking out the neighborhood. All right, well you guys have fun. I don't have nothing to feed you. Stay out the garage. Go home, hell there, go go check out the garage. They're like, ooh, what's in this garage? Don't poop on the tools. Man, this thing's corroded. I guess the chickens are back doing? Yeah, it belongs to the neighbors down there. They're just outside the city limits, so they're allowed to have them. But the chickens don't know where the city limit sign is. They don't know they're in the city. Try to get it off of here without breaking it.
This is the way they need cleaned up really well. I mean, the, the thing is, is the fuse isn't necessarily like the blade's not bad, but you can see like uh, right there where it's melted down. It's been arcing inside there. Yep, it's a little fuse 175. That's a Mega 64. That's exactly what they got. I think theirs might be a Mega 32, but 32 volts should be fine. This is only 12 volts. It's like a nice copper bolt. So, all right, now I'm gonna go get my parts. cleaned up now. Now we just gotta clean off the actual terminal connections themselves. And this thing should be pretty much good to go. Put some dielectric grease on it too. Alright, I gotta stretch out my new air hose to clean that off. Alright. Let's go ahead and clean all of this stuff off real good. these contacts A lot of spots in there where it's really been arcing it's some deep pitting in that metal. Okay, there's that one. And then we just got this one. There we go. That's all nice and cleaned up. And we're just gonna spray this all down with some battery corrosion cleaner stuff. There's a little bit of green crusty in here, but it's not bad yet. It's not been melting the cable or anything back here, so I don't think that's a problem. down in there. We just kind of let that sit for a few minutes and then hose her down with some brake clean. We should be good. Alright, so now I'm just kind of getting everything put back together. It's all cleaned up real nice. And then uh, what I want to kind of do as I put this back together too, let me put some on the undersides of this fuse. Hang on. Put some dielectric gel in here to help keep corrosion. I hope that's never sees. Let me go get the dielectric gel. Okay, I'm going to put some dielectric gel kind of all over these connections. Everywhere. 
fight the corrosion. Corrosion causes the current to go higher because the voltage drops and then you end up with melting downs. I'm going to go on here one way or another. I'm trying my 15 milli. Okay. I'll put some. So I like a gel all around this guy. So more on here. Some on these guys. Okay. Get that to thread in and tighten down. I'm going to have to pull this up out of here you know, to get it to bite, I think. Yeah. Alright, hang on, let me take this back off. This plastic part's a little melted, but I think I can make it work just fine. You just got to get it, you got to put that side together first and set it back down in there. I'm gonna get a 15 to put on the bottom. I feel like there's this guy right here. It's gonna be an issue.
Now I should be able to sit that back down in here. Yep, perfect. I should be able to feed this up through the bottom, hopefully. Put some dielectric gel on the battery terminal. And cable. Perfect. I'm just going to put a little more. Make sure I got a good coating of dielectric gel over all these connections here. Try to do as good of a job as I can repairing it. See, we gotta tighten that first. That's a 10. This, yes, I gotta be careful not to short against anything. put the uh, fuse center back in and then we'll fire it up and see if everything works um, I, I don't think we're having any more problems I'm gonna go ahead and clear the codes out of those modules you know I had to kind of move seats and stuff around inside the truck looking at wiring I gotta put all that back but this thing's about ready to ship so you can see here's where the other end of that cable that we the fuse we just replaced this is where the other end of it comes to it's the main power to feed all of the wiring all of the components right there comes all the way across the firewall there so over at the battery so now just go ahead and get this thing put back in it wasn't too hard to take out we'll see if it's simple to put it in really locked on here when I took it off, so I don't know if something's wrong. There it goes. Now it's locked on. It was all loose when I took it off, so somebody never put it on right before. <clears throat> okay. Gather up all my stuff. Yeah, I gotta run in and get my scan tool. Alright, so um, here we are. Of course, it's a uh, kind of reset most everything. Because uh, we had everything disconnected for quite a while, so I don't know that they might lose their presets and stuff. I don't know what all uh, settings will lose, like the seat adjustments, that stuff, mirror adjustments, maybe. 
But uh, there's nothing you can do in that case. It's just you got to disconnect the battery to fix that problem. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and do our special menu. I want to come down here and just do an all module scan. And yes, that's my vehicle. There we go. We'll give this a minute to scan everything. It may have erased the codes out of all those modules, but sometimes I find that they still persist on some of the individual modules. And you have to go in there and clear them. One of the things I do like about this scan tool is I can um, unplug it. And I can go in and pull up all the all the data that was in there that you scanned for all the modules and everything stays in it while it's unplugged so you can go and review it like when you're looking around on the computer and looking at tech bulletin and stuff like that see where the codes are where the different modules are that kind of stuff to try to figure out what's going on that's something I truly love about this scan tool um, it, it does that with like the last two vehicles you've worked on These, uh, this is actually an Innova it's the same thing as the uh, New Harbor Freight ones um, this is the one that does the ABS and SRS um, they also have another one that does a couple extra functions I think it's like the 5160 or something like that this is the 5100 it'll do like steering angle adjustments and, and some stuff like that but this has been a good little scan tool I do need a better bi-directional scan tool though but I usually manage to find the problem with this It's, you know, a lot of times it's easy to find problems a bi-directional scan tool can make it faster to find the problems so there's nothing in the ECM fuel pump transmission electronic brake control module still has this y'all rate signal it's a historical code um, I'm going to go ahead and erase that uh, I did uh, do the uh, sensor on this guy uh, the uh, knock sensor a while back I have to go back in there again um, and I did have those y'all sensors cleared I know I cleared the engine codes when I was done uh, but I had the y'all sensor out it would have been out of position it may be left over from that because I don't think I went through the individual modules and cleared everything when I was done I just cleared the DTCs out of the ECM <coughs> so what you gotta do is go down here then you hit enter there's the brake control module, there's that, and then hit the clear, and this will clear it, and then hit the special key again, oh crap, <laughs> I, I, there's a key combination for this, okay, so now that one's cleared, there's still one, probably a historical code in this amplifier, that is historical for low voltage and clear that guy say yes press any hot key okay come back okay now body control module still has two and those are history codes so um, one of the things I learned about this scan tool, it says FSC here. I never knew what that meant, but one of the things I've noticed is that's always when that code is like passed to it from another module, I believe. So if I go back and we look at the driver's door switch, and then down here is the passenger door switch module, those have two DTCs. Those were passed to the body control module, and that's why it has those two DTCs in it. Just something interesting to note. Anyway, we'll erase those. And then hit enter. And then hit special. Oh, I, it, it, it sometimes see it bumps it twice. All right, I'm gonna go back in here again. I'll edit this out. Yeah, come on. Okay, so now let's go down through here and see what we got. There's one in the, there's still one in the HVAC control module. Hit enter on that guy. Erase that. Yes. Then hit enter. Let it rescan. Okay, and then press that. Okay, good. 
and then here is the left side object detection module it's history erase that special the turret module let's see what we got there security controller and learn mode that's fine it's because I had everything unhooked I don't know if I need to hit the uh, lock There's that HVAC control module. Huh, look at that. That's current. Main temperature feedback circuit open. History and current. HVAC control module. Now that's not a code that we were getting before. Isn't that... Let's check that out. That's not a code we were getting before. We were getting codes about the uh, the vents and the doors or whatever the vent, some kind of uh, thing over by the doors. That's what I looked those up to be. Uh, I don't know. Let's start it. Let's start the shutter down and let's restart. Let's come back to special functions and let's do an all module scan. Yeah. We still have this one code in the HVAC. Now that's saying it's just history. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. Okay, now there's none, so there's no current code. I'm just going to play with this. Seems okay. We still have that in here. I don't know, I don't know if it'll let us race that code or not. We'll see. Hit enter. Rescan. Okay, it let us erase that code. Uh, but it's probably just things go flaky when you disconnect the battery on these guys. And it looks like there's no DTCs in it at all now. So I'm just going to back back out of here and do an all module scan again just to make sure. Okay, so like especially like when I wiggled that cable and the door locks and everything started going crazy and lights were coming off and on inside and the radio rebooted like it was losing its mind. It was like a demon came in here and possessed this vehicle. It's crazy. I never seen anything quite like that. So I'm I'm, I'm just thinking like that's why there's some codes and other stuff that weren't there before because uh, you know these modules were losing their mind. That's probably actually really bad for the modules. It's you know. Um, but everything looks good. There's no DTCs after a rescan, so I'm happy with that. And uh, that's, I'm just gonna go in here because we did have that brake light signal high, but again, voltage could cause that problem, right? Um, if if it's not getting the right voltage to the uh, PCM or that's going flaky, that's all communication that happens. That can all be related. It could be a bad brake light switch that's just intermittent. We'll just have to see if that problem comes back. But I can go in here real quick to the ABS and go ahead and do a live data. And you see it's released now. Apply. Released. I'm just going to barely touch it. A little more. A little more. There. I'm going to come back up off of it real slow. 
Because if it's going to stick, that's probably when it's going to happen. When you barely let up off of it. And it's, it's working. And steering wheel position. That's working. Yep. So no problems there. Uh, you should be able to see the yaw rate in here too. Uh, here's our yaw rate. It's at 2.55 volts. If I shake the car back and forth a little bit, we'll see that go to 2.53. You know, so that's working. Um, I don't. I can't make it. I'm, I'm parked in my yard. I'm not gonna be able to make it accelerate for the accelerometer. But uh, definitely seems to be working now. So we're gonna see what happens. I'm give this back to the customer and let him drive it for a while. See if it loses any more coolant. If it does, I'm either gonna have to buy a pressure tester, which I've been wanting to do, or just tell him to take it to a good shop that I know. I know a few that can run a pressure test on that guy and uh, see if they can figure out where the leak might be. Um, it's definitely not doing it at, at 200 degrees or whatever it's running. I don't know. Let's see what its temp is. It's like it's right at 200 or so. Maybe that's 210 on there. So we can go. Oh crap! I have to go to Global ODE too in order to do my live data on this. It won't do live data out of the OEM. So, yeah, 198, 196, 198. Yeah. I think it looks good there. Fuel trims are acceptable. Um, I mean, we're, we're removing fuel pretty good from both banks seven and five that'd be a sign uh man injectors or something but they do change under load i do notice a little bit of a soft mist uh but sometimes at idle so it might have a leaky injector because they're staying pretty negative in that long term position it's still relearning everything but for some reason, it's wanting to remove some fuel there. But it's within tolerances. It's not bad. Fuel pressure. There's our map. Map's working. Um, mass airflow. Mass airflow is all good. Throttle position. Working. O2 sensors look good. Of course, this has got the, the newer ones probably where it emulates these voltages for the global OBD2. It's not really the voltage. They're like current switch now instead of voltage switched or whatever. Not that it really matters too much for my diagnostic purposes, but it's something good to know if you're diagnosing a weird problem. But the oxygen sensors now on a lot of these newer cars they really uh, make small minute changes in current they're not changing voltage but it'll show you the voltage changing and that's a conversion that the, co the computer's doing for global OB OBD2 to be compliant with OBD2 standards um, but that's computer simulated data it's not real data um, everything looks good to me we're, we're just gonna let them let them run it for a while of course it's got it set its emission monitors and everything still um, but yeah I'm happy all right folks so I mean that's kind of what I'm finding um, when you have that many things like going crazy and showing you an issue um, you could go crazy and pull your hair out all day ripping out panels checking wiring and you're just chasing a needle in a haystack. Um, so, you know, a good visual inspection and doing a little bit of reading on a few of those codes and uh, seeing what some common problems were and finding a tech service bulletin about that fuse and the arcing problem um, and about it that was also linked to modules giving low voltage or, or communication errors. Um, that 
led me down the path like, oh, check that fuse. And then I was like, oh, that thing's really bad. Like arcing and melting the plastic and crap. And then I gave it a little wiggle and like this thing became possessed, right? So I think that's probably the heart of all the problems. It's it's really weird on these because you can get a lot of uh, weird codes going on that are not really related to each other or to the problem. But and they're caused by something unexpected like that. Um, so what I usually do is fix what I can see, what I can reproduce, what I can find. And um, then we just have to clear the codes. We have to let them drive it. We have to see if anything else comes back. Because it's possible that while a bunch of those codes were erroneous caused by that bad connection, the one or two of them might have been actual problems. We, we have no way of knowing um, if we can't reproduce it. Um, I've looked all over this thing for any signs of a coolant leak and I just can't find one. Um, so again, I'm going to tell them to keep an eye on the coolant. You know, if it's a 2012 and it got a little low on coolant, I mean, that's possible, right? I don't know when it was topped off last or whatever, but generally cars shouldn't use that much coolant these days. Um, but, you know, six years, you know, so I don't know. I, I would imagine during oil changes it would have been checked, but a lot of times places don't. So, especially on these, because... The overflow tank is part of the pressurized system and you gotta let it cool in order to add. So um, I would say keep an eye on that. If we do notice coolant disappearing slowly, then it needs to go in to somebody that's got a good pressure tester to really take a look at what's going on. I want to get a pressure tester. There are those cheap Chinese ones, um, but I think they're just nothing but problems, the few that I've worked with. So if I get one, I want to invest in a good one. And I don't have the money to right now before Christmas. So, anyway, that's what I'm doing. That's what's going on. Um, I'm going to go put a uh, camshaft position sensor on the PT Cruiser. I scanned it real quick. It's got camshaft position sensor codes in it. Um, it had those before, and it had an oil leak where oil got in the connector. I cleaned all that out, put it back together, and thought that was the problem. Um, it's had an issue lately where you'll be driving and the cruise control disengages and the check engine light comes on and then it'll go away and the cruise will work. I'm sure that's a camshaft position sensor. Probably flipping out a little bit, gets a code, it disengages the cruise. Um, so it was like 40 bucks. I'm just gonna, just gonna swap it. I'm not gonna get all fancy and scope it or nothing. I'm just gonna swap it um, <laughs> and see what happens there. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.